Thank you, Louise. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to OTF Connects. Uh, thank you so much for giving of your own time to join us tonight. It's wonderful to have representation from across the province, and always great to have new participants joining us. It's my pleasure to welcome Nellie Bickley and Jim Carlton, who are with Iron Canada. Uh, they're going to be facilitating tonight's webinar, Classroom Blogging, Communicating with the World. Nellie and Jim are very passionate ed educators, and they've um, facilitated numerous webinars for OTF Connect, and always bring so many creative ideas and resources to share with us. So welcome, Nellie and Jim. Thanks, Syria and Louise. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's really great to be here and be with everybody. And like Louise and Syria said, um, thanks for spending your own time. But, um, we know that um, it's a really, really busy time of year, and um, you're all getting prepared for the end of the year, which is always really exciting. So um, um, I'll see if Jim wants to introduce himself first. I'm just Sure, okay, so I'll give it a try and hopefully my sound isn't lagging too far behind. And so like Mali and Louise and Sirius were saying, so we're also from, we're also teachers. So we're from Iron Canada and we'll talk a little bit about that as we get into the global connections part of it. But we're also classroom teachers and this year I'm teaching uh, an SK1 class and Mali has a grade, was it grade four or five Mali? And so a lot of the examples that we'll be showing will be more, right, and so a lot of some of the examples we'll be showing will be more geared towards that, but if you're teaching older kids, we've also got some of those examples, and I think some of the, some of the resources that, is, that we have will apply to um, whatever age you're teaching. So just as an overview, we're just going to um, we're going to be doing some activities in a few minutes, but we just want to set up set it up um, about why we blog, um, and because we've been blogging for probably I would say seven or eight years now with our classrooms and in different capacities with different projects, um, because with through Iron, which we'll talk about in a little bit, we um, collaborate with classes around the world. Um, we'll talk about some different blogging platforms, and this is where things might get a little bit confusing because there's so many choices out there, and we've narrowed it down. To, we'll talk about three, but and talk about the one that, that we specifically use, and and also how we connect with others. So the first thing, are we we're going to go to the survey first, Jim? Put the link into the chat, the chat box. So if people want to just click on the link that's in the chat box. So what we're going to do is a little um, survey. That's on the home page of a blog. I'll put it in. It's all you. Oh, oops. So can you hear me okay, Molly? Or? Yeah. You're lagging a okay. little bit. So hopefully people, hopefully people have clicked on the link and gotten to the um, blog. Maybe what I should do is should I share my screen here, or should we just go to the? Or do you want to share yours, maybe, Molly? Since you've got more bandwidth over there. Um. Yeah, I don't have. I, I'm working off two computers. Right. But, but I if can. you share your, your screen. Yeah, it'll I probably agree. be better if you share your screen of the blog. It'll be better than if I do because yeah. then I'm trying to share a screen and my, yeah, you're right. my voice. If that makes any Get sense. In there. Um, anyway, so on the home page of that blog, I'm just going to pop over to mine. If you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see what we've done is we just embedded a couple of quick little. Um, polls. So you'll see that there's three polls. That's what division do you teach? Do you have a blog and blogging platform? So all you need to do is just click on whichever answer you have for that, for any one of those, and click on vote. And then you should see the results of uh, aggregate from, along with everyone else. So that would be the first one. 
and that'll give us a little bit of information about what other people are where people are at. Now, Louise, can you remind me? Oh. So you can see we've got a lot of. Pro there you go. So go ahead. Yeah. Now I'm sharing my desktop. So can you let me know if you can see the desktop? Know what, Mally? I have a feeling that technology titles? might be yeah, working yeah, against us tonight because I can see that you've activated the application sharing. However, we're still just looking at the slides. So do you want to click your button to go back to the whiteboard and then go back to the application sharing, but maybe access application sharing through your tools menu? And you know what? It's okay. It looks like everybody's found what we just need for this part anyway, Mally, so I wouldn't worry. Okay. I would just keep it the way it is. Okay. So we don't have to. So maybe keep it the way it is because it looks like everybody's found the, the polls. And part of what we want to do here is to show that you can embed different tools into your blog. So these polls, these three, the three polls there were just created in Poll Daddy and then we've embedded them into the blog. So it looks like it's part of your blog. And that's one of the great things about having a blog is you can work in all these other different sites, whether you've got videos in YouTube and, or created something in Poll Daddy. And then below here we have a survey in Poll Everywhere, Animoto, um, all these other places that you might already have your kids in or that you've heard about. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that in the end. You can have your kids working all over the web and then your blog is the place to kind of bring it all together, the portal that's going to bring it all together. So we've got the poll up above and then poll everywhere. You can see just below the question, what do you hope to learn from this session? If you click on where it says respond at pollev.com slash Carlton, if you click on that, it should open up another window for you. And then in there, all you have to do is type in whatever it is that you hope to learn tonight, whether it's just about blogs in general, if you're looking to make global connections, are you looking, you already have a blog and you want to be able to do um, more interesting things with it, that sort of thing, or you're brand new to blogging, whatever. So whatever you're at, wherever you're at, just type it in, submit the response, and then you'll see uh, the results will pop up onto the, that, that little uh, poll everywhere. Um, embedded screen. And if you want to see it larger, you'll see just below it, um, you, you can click on that and it will open up another window. And this will be something we'll have to kind of do once we've done these, these two Poll Everywhere activities. You might want to close these windows, otherwise by the end of this tonight you're going to have a whack of windows open. But you'll be able to see the responses then. Um, so we can see things popping up now. So we can see some people are interested in global connections, how to involve parents, how to ensure things are secure and safe. And that's awesome. So I think those, these are all things that we'll be addressing. And, and so that's good for us to see too because then we can sort of focus in a little bit more on some of those things rather than others. And I think that's all we need from that right now then, okay. So that gives us some information to work with, plus hopefully give you an idea, just a, a quick start of something that you can do with your blogs, so embedding polls and surveys. Um, and we'll flip it back over to Mally. So but there are a few of you who have some experience with blogging and others who are brand new to blogging. So um, when, when we're introducing blogging, um, this is a really great video to watch. If you've ever seen the In Plain English series, um, this is Blogging in Plain English. And it just explains very simply what blogging is all about, how, it connect, how, how um, you can just send information to the world. So Louise, can you tee this one up and we can watch this one? 
Absolutely. So folks, instead of the slides, you're now going to see a web tour and it is going to be a YouTube video and it's going to start playing right away. And when the, vi the video is finished playing, and you may have an ad or something in front of it as well, you can use your polling tool to give us a green check mark to let us know you're finished. If the web tour doesn't show up well, the link is also in the chat if you prefer to open it in your own browser. So it looks like Jim and I didn't see anything, but it, from the check marks, it looks like that most people have, or many people have already seen the video. So maybe we can go back to this um, presentation. <clears throat> Thanks. We didn't see the video for some reason, but we've seen it before. So um, for, as you can see from the blog, the blog is just a, an online um, way of sharing information. and. In a classroom situation, it's a really valuable tool to be using um, with your students or, uh, you know, with your students or as a means of communication um, for lots of different reasons. Um, when we were talking about this and why we, we use it, the first and foremost thing that we use it for is sharing student work and so that we can communicate with parents because um, often in a digital situation that um, when, when you're creating a lot of digital work with your students, they're not getting home those, um, they're not getting home the tangible pieces of work. So if you're able to upload some of the digital work that you're, that you're creating with your students in a common place, it's a great way to share that. Um, it, it shows, um, it's, a, it's like a window to your classroom at times as well. Um, we can post pictures immediately when, um, if you're doing a really great activity with your students, you can post it on the blog as a shared, like as a shared activity, and the, the parents can see immediately what their what their kids are doing. Um, so there's that real time class communication. Um, as Jim said, we can integrate a lot of tools into into our blog, like Twitter. So if if the kids are sending out a tweet, it can go immediately on your blog, and the and the parents can see from wherever they are what their what their kids are doing in class. Um, it gives the students a global and authentic audience. And global doesn't mean necessarily all, you know, all over the world. It can be the, the grandmother who lives down the street or um, their parents who are working in the city, whatever. whatever. Um, it's just reaching out to an authentic audience and, and the kids know that people are actually looking at their work. And another purpose of blogging, for, you know, um, as a teacher is it, be, it becomes a space for professional blogging. And I'm, um, just put a check mark if you follow somebody, another teacher's blog. Um, if, if you um, follow another teacher who um, maybe is in your division or could be somewhere else in the world, if you follow another teacher's blog, yeah. there are a couple of, of um, actually the scrapbookers that I follow their blogs, but I do follow some professional blogs as well, and it just gives you know it gives me ideas and inspiration, and um, so there's a lot of different reasons for why we blog. Um, Jim, do you want to talk about the integration, or is your sound cut up? We kind of touched upon this in, um, when we were doing the polls, and like Mally was saying, it, you know, if you have a Twitter feed or whatever, your blog is a nice place where you can just, um, it's like one-stop shopping. Instead of sending parents and students to 20 different places all over the internet, they can come to your blog and you can just have all that information that's all over the place come into, um, kind of, like I said, like your one-stop shopping area. Uh, so you can see here Mally is taking a screenshot of, of hers and so she's got some tools like widgets like Shalfari that shows the books that her kids are reading, calendar, um, and it's nice that you can have with a lot of blogs just a little update of your calendars so as soon as people go in, they see what's happening in the next, the next uh, few days, the next few events that are coming up. She's got her Twitter feed there. Um, it's just great for bringing, bringing everything together. 
So we'll look at a couple, just a couple of examples, and we'll give you the links to a couple of these blogs, and we have permission to share them. Um, some of you who have done the OTF Connects uh, sessions before might know the amazing Jacqueline Calder, and she has a really good secondary. She she blogs about her experiences. Um, she's great at maintaining her blog. Um, so if you want to, we're going to have some time to explore a couple of these blogs in a few minutes. But this is where she she um, as some interesting articles that she's read. Jacqueline is a great information sharer. So if you're looking for some information on pretty much anything, you can find um, things on Jacqueline's blog. She's a secondary teacher in Midland and really has amazing outreach. Um, so there's class blogs. And um, these are just two screenshots of um, my class and Jim's class, so my grade fours. Um, we have we have a blog that we we share and and hope, well, I haven't to be quite honest I've been at school for a while but um, the, the students post their work on the blog and and quite regularly and Jim's class kindergarten grade one they post a lot of their work on their blog and the the links to both of the blogs are there if you're interested in going and visiting um, either of those blogs but we'll be looking at them in, in the next few minutes. Um, and there are also project blogs. So when we do talk about um, global collaborations in just a few minutes, um, often teachers teachers who are um, in projects together, a lot of the time these collaborations are very organic. And, and in this particular project, there were a group of teachers that got together and and we decided as a group that we would maintain a blog. So this is how the um, it's called the Teddy Bear Project, how the, the teachers and the students in the Teddy Bear Project in about eight countries um, are sharing the travels of their teddy bear. So these are three different kinds that we're going to be talking about in the next little bit. Um, Jim, you can maybe talk about comparing. I think Mallory was saying in the beginning, there are just so many different choices out there. And tonight, we're only going to be looking at three different ones, kids' blogs, kids blog, Weebly, and Edu blogs. Um, and I notice about 50% of you are already are, are working on blogs and are interested in other blogs. So if you want to type into the chat box if you're using a different blogging platform like WordPress or Blogger or whatever you're using, just go ahead and type that in. Um, there's tons of them out there. Edge of Blogs is actually built on WordPress. So it has a lot of the same features as WordPress except for you don't have the same level of moderation and um, teacher control that you get in Edge of Blogs. Kid Blog is more of a prime, more geared towards primary junior. Um, unbelievable controls over what students are posting and who's going to see it. And then Weebly, um, it's it's a re it puts together a really nice site for you. And we're going to play in all three of these in a minute. But it would be some a site that I would use more. Uh, if I was either teaching secondary, uh, intermediate, secondary, or if I was creating a blog and I was the only, I was, as a teacher, I'm the only one that's doing the posting. So maybe I'm posting the students' work, the students aren't posting anything themselves because there's not a, a whole lot of control over what students would be posting in that site. And like I said, we'll play with those three in a few minutes. Um, all, of this, all the different sites. All, the, all three of these have a free version and a paid version, and we'll talk a little bit about, about, more about that as we get into it. So oh, go ahead, Molly. Pardon me. Okay, so um, the next little bit is is where we're going to be having the opportunity to play in one of the blog and and compare some of the blogs. And this is something an activity that Jim set up, which I thought was awesome because it'll give you a chance to go in and um, and play. And depending on whether you're primary, junior, intermediate, secondary, um, there are activities in there for, for you. So if you want to go to go back to the blog, and Jimmy could maybe explain what um, we could be doing in here. Just trying to watch the chat at the same time. Um, because I could see people were saying that they've been using uh, Blogger because they're new to blogging. And it is a pretty easy site to use. And it is affiliated with Google. My, 
again, it would be sort of like in the Weebly category of blogs that we're looking at. You don't get the same level of control. It's built more for the general public. Um, it's fine to use in education, but you just have to know that you're not going to have the same level of control that you're going to have in blogs like blogging platforms like Kid Blogs and EduBlogs. And to kind of show that, maybe that's what we're going to do now is just if you click on the link to the test site that's that's in the chat and we're the same site that we were just at before, the blogging platform, what we're going to do is we're just going to go into those three different blogs and we're going to make quick posts into each one. And by doing that, I think you'll get a sense of the, the differences between the three. So from the home page, you can see just over to the right, when I click on blog, this site was one I just put together on the weekend in Weebly. And it sort of demonstrates that Weebly is more built not just as a blogging platform, it's for building a website that you can include a blog into. So uh, you can see like all the pages within this blog are really just normal website pages except for when you click on the blog page. That's where I can create blog posts and you can see here I just whipped in a Mother's Day playlist, um, a little gallery of, of Three, uh, a few of the kids in my classroom. Um, but this blog, I'm going to be the only one that's able to post to it. There's no way, there's, I can't set it up in any sort of way where students are going to be able to post to this, this particular classroom blog, which again is fine. Um, you might be the only person who wants to post to that blog and or it might be um, a case where you're just taking the student's work and posting it there yourself too. So let's flip over to Kid Blog. If you click on the Kid Blog link up at the top menu, you can see there there's some instructions on how to get in. So you're just going to click on that link to kidblog.org and then once you're in there you'll see that there's a student section and you can just copy and paste or just type in the code that's there for kid blog. And that's the code that's been set up for this particular website. And this is one way in kid blog that you can have your kids join the blog. It's just by giving them the code. They're going to do exactly what you're going to do here. Create your, your own username and password. Um, you can choose to use an email address or not. So your students don't have to use an email address. It's great if they do have an email address, if, you have, if your board has email addresses for students, because if they lose the password, they can click on forgot password and have it sent to them rather than having to come to you to reset their password. But the nice thing is students don't have to have, have a password, um, which can be a problem in some instances. Uh, hi, Jim. So once you're in there. Diane and Min. We are asking where the code is. So the code is on the um, on our test page, like on our the OTF blog playground page. So when they click on Kid Blog from that page, there'll be a link to, to go to Kid Blogs. And then step three in there says use QAMF, QAMFCQS. So maybe I'll copy and paste that too and stick it into the chat. And that will be the code that they're going to use to sign up as a student into KidBlog. And then once they're there, all you have to do is just, you'll, you would see up in the top right area, there's a big blue button that says new posts. And then either you or your students would just click on that. And KidBlog is really set up in a way that it's going to be not just about you posting, it's going to be about you and your students posting. So you can just type in anything you want there, add an image if you want and just post it because the main thing that I want you to see is that when you go to publish it, when you go to post whatever you have, you ha first of all the students have a choice to either, and you have to make sure that you have a title, otherwise you're not going to get the publish button, it's not going to show up for you. So you have to make sure that you type, put in a title, 
You don't have to worry about the part that says added image header if you don't want. Um, we really don't have a lot of time right now, but that's going to be, if you do put something in there, it just makes it more visual, but definitely not necessary right now. You'll see once you've typed something in and you've typed in a title, up in the upper right, you can see that they can either save it for a draft as a draft, they can send it to the teacher for a review, or they can publish it. So in this case, whatever you've typed, you're just going to go to publish. And then what's really cool and, and different in KidBlog is then it comes up and it asks you what audience do you want to be able to post to. And as a teacher, you have the ability to predetermine this ahead of time. So you could, for example, say, no, I never want you to be able to publish to the public. Um, it's always going to be just within our classroom, or it's always going to go to just people who have a, a code, so that parents can join the classroom with the code, so it could just be your students and the parents, and they're the only people who are ever going to see this blog. Um, the connections area would be that you and another classroom have exchanged a code, and now if, you, if your students are publishing to the connections area, that means that the other students and the teacher in the other classroom are going to be able to see what's being posted. Or finally, public, um, if you choose to public, post it to the public, whichever one you choose, you would, the students would click on that. And then again, the teacher decides whether or not they're going to moderate those posts, um, no matter which one of those choices that you've taken, they're going to decide whether or not they're going to come to the teacher first and be moderated, or is it something that's just going to go straight to, um, to the blog? So it really does give the teacher a lot of control. And then right now, I can see some people have posted to connections, some people have posted to class members. Um, I don't think anybody's gone to, to the public yet. And then as a teacher, like I said, I can go in and I can see which posts needs, need to be moderated, um, and away we go. So it's a nice site. If you want a lot of control over what your students are doing, um, it's great, it's simple, it's easy, um, it's really designed probably with, with primary, junior, maybe intermediate students in mind. Um, super simple and tons of control, like I said. So we'll just get out of that particular test site. So you're probably going to want to like exit the whole window just so that you don't have 100 windows open by the time we finish this. And then go back to our test blog, our OTF testing blog, where we've got the, the link to kid blog and the uh, test code. And if you didn't have a chance, don't we're going to, I mean, you'll have this, this test blog will be open to whatever, so you can always go back in afterwards. And the same with the resources that we're going to be talking about later, they'll all be there for you to access later on. But we just quickly want to go over to the Weebly test site just to see the difference. So if you click on Weebly, um, you're going to see we're going to just log in as a student. Um, because one of the major differences here is that when we were in KidBlog and we were posting, it was we, all of our posts were going to that same blog, which we can then filter out. I could I could click on a particular student and I would just see that that those students' posts. But in this case in Weebly, when I click on a student the student blog, so they're going to go to students.weebly.com, and you're just going to use the username OTF Test One. And that information is on the same page, and then the password is just OTF test. And when we go when we go to when we log into that site, the student would see. So we're all just pretending we're the same student. The student would see a list of any of the blogs that they've joined. And then in this case, you'll see there's just OTF test one site. And you click on that site, and it would take you to the editor for that the editing site for that blog. And once you do that, if 
you're going to see that the tools for building this blog are a little bit more sophisticated than they were in um, KidBlog. So what you have to do to po post in here is you just go down to the and the post that's in there, just test post that I made in this KidBlog. You would just go down to New Post on the lower right hand corner, the big blue new post. Give your post a title and you just click in there, whatever you want to click. And then you'll see over on the left hand side you have a bunch of tools. So you decide if you wanted if you wanted to, and you can see the rectangle just below the title that says drag elements here. You just go over to the left, grab some text if you want, and you drag it into where it says drag elements here. You'll see it will load up, and then you would just be able to type into there if it's text. Same thing, you would just, if you want to add an image, you would go over and you would just grab the image icon, drag it into your editing space, wait for it to load up, and then it's, it's going to say, and we might have too many people on this one blog at the same time. So it might be something you'll have to go back in and try later because I know when I just tried to drag over my image now, it was like, whoops, not going to happen. But basically, hopefully you just can see that you, get, you, you just drag over what you, what you want, whether it's a YouTube video, a map, you can create a gallery of images. Um, it could be a... a you could embed polls, whatever you want, and then you would post that to your blog. So it gives you a lot of different choices. It's going to look really good, but when it, once it gets put, and then if you want to post, you just go up to the upper right, and it's in orange, and you click on Publishing Post. Now, a huge difference, though, between this site and something like Kid Blogs is this is just going to post to that student's blog. It's not going to be associated with your classroom blog or in any sort of way. As a teacher, your moderating abilities are minimal. You can, the only thing you're going to be able to control is you can control their comments. So you can um, moderate all the comments that students make on, on postings, but you can't control the student's posting itself. Um, you can turn off their blog because you've sort of created it for them. You've created the space for them. So you can, if they're abusing the space, you can turn it off. But um, you don't have the same sort of moderation controls that you would have in something like KidBlog. On, on, the other, on the other end of things, though, if I was teaching secondary or intermediate or secondary, it's going to be a lot more sophisticated than something like KidBlog. I'm probably not going to, maybe I've got three sections. I'm not going to be mo wanting to moderate every single post that's coming from 90 students anyway. I'm going to have to have uh, a higher level of trust with them and I'm going to have to assume that they're going to be better at proofreading their material before they publish it and that sort of thing um, because I'm not going to have the same level of control over it. So again, it, it, it could also be though still, even though even though it's just if you wanted your students to be posting, that's when I would say it's more of a secondary platform uh, or uh, intermediate at the very earliest. If I'm going to use it in primary and junior, it's because I'm the only person who's going to be posting to this blog. It's the, uh, my students aren't posting at all because that's just going to get way too, um, way too difficult without those moderating abilities. So if you want to just exit out of that space now, We'll quickly go back to the OTF blogging playground and we'll click on the third one which is EduBlogs. And so EduBlogs is built in WordPress which is another blogging platform that you've probably heard of but it's been designed um, specifically for educators to use. It's got a ton of controls again for teachers to be able to moderate and um, approve posts before they get posts posted. Uh, you have the ability to, again, decide who's going to be able to, to view it. And I'll just step back just for a second with Weebly. You have two choices. Either everybody in the world sees it 
or you have to have a password to be able to see it. So it's one or the other. Um, with kid blogs and edu blogs, you have lots of layers uh, all the way from um, just you're the only person who's going to be able to see it to the whole entire world sees it to just your class sees it and almost everywhere in between. So if you click on um, what we're going to be really doing is we're just going to be posting to my blog. So you click on the link to the blog that's yep. there and you go to log in and I think what we're going to do is we're just going to, I'm going to flip back to the Sorry, Jim. Uh, and just give everybody a different, go ahead. Okay, sorry. That's just part of the sound lag. Um, can we just check sorry, in we'll with folks everybody. and see if they're doing okay? Uh, Mandy posted that she was lost a few minutes ago, so I just want to make sure everyone is doing okay and if they have specific questions before we move on to the next one. This is Mandy. I'm caught up and just I think my browser might be slow or something because when I'm trying to get on it's just processing, processing it and then he's already on to the next thing. So I'm kind of, I, I never really even got onto Weebly because it just stalled the whole time. And now I'm on EduBlogs but I don't see the username and password but I also know coming into this that I need a lot of help learning how to do this stuff so bear with me. I'm sure it's not the teaching. It's, Probably mine. <laughs> the gap in no, my don't. abilities. <laughs> yeah, and no don't worries. worry, Mandy. Well, yep, Mally, go well, ahead. The password, and actually, when I was in Weebly as well, Mandy, it was it just kept spinning, and it could be that a, a lot of us were on the site trying to post. So no worries. The good thing is that the site is there for you to go um, on later and and do some of the activities in your own time when there aren't 20 people on the same site. And there are a lot of resources in there. Um, Jim loaded the pages with tutorials for each of those sites and some resources that will help you build them as well. That's, that, yeah, that's exactly it. Thanks, Melly. Is I, I think I did that, that's exactly what happened in Weebly. I because everybody had the same username and password, we are all the same student, so it's just like, whoa, can't handle everybody trying to post at once. So in this one, we're going to give everybody a different username and password. That might help, might not, we'll find out. But really, all we want you to do is just get a sense of these three different sort of platforms that go from um, more of a you know primary junior, which is like kid blog, to Weebly, which is more of a secondary type of a platform, to Edge Blogs, which could kind of cover the whole range, um, and, and like like Louise was saying too, you can always go back in afterwards and just play with them if you're not really sure which one you would want to go with. Um, so we'll go back to so hopefully people have logged into or gone to the Edge Blogs page, and when the, what we're going to do is just go down the list. And then everybody's just going to be OTF1 as a user. You'll be the username and password are the same for all of them. So it's like OTF1 as a username and password OTF1. So whatever you, I give you, the username and password will be the same. So if we start at the top, so like Andrea, if you go in as OTF1 as a username and OTF1 as a password, you should get in. And then is that Anik? I can't quite see that name. Um, I got interrupted because I already did OTF one. I so <laughs> I skipped ahead. It's Mandy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's called yeah, cutting okay. in line. Yeah, I I'll give you guys a back cut. <laughs> oh. Okay. So then we'll go to the next person. Then uh, so Andrea, if you do OTF two. So username OTF2, password OTF2. And then is it Anik? You could be OTF3. So username OTF3, password OTF3. And Aaron, OTF4, username and password, both OTF4. Chantal, OTF5 for both. And Duque, OTF6. Username and password, both OTF6. Diane, 
OTF7. It looks like Jason's away. And so Visa OTF8. For the username and password for Lisa OTF8. And then Mandy's already in. So Maureen, you'd be OTF9. Username and password, both OTF9. Stephanie can be OTF10. And Tabitha will be OTF11. So if anybody's, if anybody didn't get a password, just let me know. And then once you're in there, I'm just going to flip in myself just so I can see what the, because the student view, because right now you're, in, you're logged in as a student, and you'll see that the options for the student are, um, they're going to be more limi limited than what options for a um, teacher would be. So you should just see just up, up near the top, making a new post, with the option to make a new post. And I've set them right now so that I'm not going to be moderating them. But I could, I could very easily have set them up so that they could be moderated. So that the post would come to me first before I'm going to publish it and, and it's live. And again, within Edge of Blogs, I would have the choice ahead of time to set it up to decide who's going to be able to view it. Is the whole world going to be able to view it? Or is it just going to be the class? Or just parents? Um, comments, I can also moderate before they come in. You can just, you have a lot of different options there. So Edge of Blogs is really great for the amount of control that you get as an educator. So you can just type in anything that you want and then just click on post and it should go to the blog. It's got a lot of different options, but the downside of it is whereas in Weebly um, and in Kid Blogs, the free versions will let you do pretty much what you want to do. Where you need to get more expensive versions would be if you just wanted to have a lot of different backgrounds or templates to choose from, if you had more than 40 students in a class, you would need to upgrade that, those sorts of things. Um, Blogger that I noticed somebody else was using, same sort of thing. When with EduBlogs, you really don't get a lot with, with the free version. With the free version, you can't embed things which means you're not going to be able to embed YouTube videos and all the stuff that we were talking about, the, the polls and other things that we were talking about before. And in my mind, if you can't do that, um, all you're going to be able to do is publish text. You're going to be able to just publish a few pictures. You only get 20 megabytes worth of space with that, with that free account. It's really not going to do a lot for you. So if you're going to use EduBlogs, you almost have to, in my mind, purchase the, the paid account, and that's about, if there's just one teacher in your school using it, I think it's about $40 a year. The more teachers that you have buying at the same time, the cheaper it's going to be. Um, but in my mind, I think it's worth it because you get a lot of control, and then there's just so much that you can do. It's, it's, it's almost, it's one of those sites that um, takes a long time to get used to because at first it can seem overwhelming, so that might be a reason why you might shy away from it. But I think it's worthwhile um, if, it's, if, it's, if you think you're really seriously going to get into blogging, because there's just so many thing, different things that you can do with it. Um, and one of the things that we're going to be showing you in the resource section at the end uh, so, like you'll see, like in, in this particular case, I've got kindergarten kids who have created their own blogs. And the nice thing with, with EduBlogs is they can create their own blog, but it's still associated with you as the teacher. So when they post to their own blog, you'll still be able to moderate that post if you choose to do so. And then there are other tools that are available that we're going to give you in the end where just using an iPad or an iPod or an iPhone, 
they can post kindergarten kids can post to their to the site um, with ease. You can show them once and within seconds. The, the, the only downfall of it is I'll have kids wanting to make five or six posts a day and, and it's just it's too much to moderate. So you can always go back, look at these sites, explore them a little bit more on your own and I think we'll kind of move on to the global connections and then let you look at the resources that will that has tutorials on, on these sites and more um, that will allow you to sort of decide on which platform you might want to use yourself. Uh, Mandy, did you have a question? And or we can take some questions towards the end that, on, in terms of what might work yeah, best I for you. I her hand up. I did, but it's okay. I, I'm good. I'll, if, I, if it comes up again, I'll ask again, but we're good. Okay, and the other thing that we found with Edublogs is it's constantly evolving. Um, as new um, tools and 2.0 tools come out, and, and um, websites, video sharing and, and media sharing websites, um, they've, they seem to evolve and, and uh, let you post with, for, for, so there's the integration with, there's constantly changing and, inter and allowing integration of those new tools. So um, Edge of Blogs has definitely evolved really well over the past seven or eight years. and. Um, and, and really makes sharing of, of uh, what's happening in your class really um, relevant and, and exciting for the kids. So, for example, if they're making, as Jim said, his, his little kindergarten kids are creating their own blog posts. In my class, they're creating media and posting it on YouTube and then embedding it into the, into the class blog, which is really exciting. So, um, yeah, it's a great tool. So we'll just go on to um, how we use um, blogging for global collaboration. Oh, Mandy, do you have a question now? <laughs> Which is great. I can't read the chat for some reason. It's not oh. a great technology night around here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I guess my question is, a lot of the classrooms that I've been in, so there's like some schools are wanting teachers to have classroom uh, websites. Do you find that the blogs are now overtaking the need and the necessity for the classroom websites because it's more interactive with the kids? Because in the class website, the teacher has full control. So is this the newest thing? You think doing a blog, does it make more sense to create one of those than it is to create necessarily a classroom website for parents to visit? Um, I guess it's all about purpose. Like with our, both of our blogs are, um, are a way to share, uh, they're really heavily populated with student work. There are mm -hmm. some teachers who use blogs, sort of, they look like a, um, a website, it's more just that sharing of information, it's information driven. So it just depends on what the, te the teacher is comfortable with. Um, yeah, I think. And, and the purpose. So, sorry, Jen, go ahead. Sense. Yeah, I guess I was just asking if this is like the new wave of where we're going because you know, I think there's a lot of people who are doing this that it seems really valid and purposeful. Um, so I was just, you know, curious, I guess, if, if this is something that you guys are noticing more and more of. Yeah, we, actually we are noticing that, that more and more teachers are using it as a, a way to, to share student work, but there's still some teachers who are, and which is great, they're, they're using um, blogs or websites to communicate um, with parents as well. Sort of that, that's where we went back at the beginning of like why are we blogging? Like um, we're blogging to share information with parents and then to showcase student work. And I think in our classes our kids are so motivated to be sharing their work with, this, with their parents and we have such um, opportunities for them to be creating digital work. We need a way to share that um, because they are doing a lot of, um, they're doing a lot of media. So it, it's, it's just a way that we can share it in, a, in a, an efficient way with our parents and with the kids and, you know, globally. Did you, did you want to say something to you, Jen? I think that, that okay, I'll pretty much covers it. Um, like you said, it's, it's really about your purpose. And I think, um, you know, initially, I
started out too, and it was just more of a classroom website of, as a way of me to communicate with parents. And then, go ahead. The more, more I've gone along, the more, the more and more I use it as a tool for my students to communicate. And like I said, and that's from kindergarten right on up now. And uh, okay, I think we're this is there's a little bit of a lag in the in the audio, which is unfortunately we we apologize for that. Um, okay, so c there are quite a few organizations that facilitate global collaborations, but we're we're going to really talk about three, or um, and three that we work closely with. One of them is really close to our hearts. It's called IEARN, which is the International Education and Resource Network, and IEARN is an organization of that can, consists of about um, 100. There are teachers from 125 countries. There are about, they say there are about a million students involved in these and uh, 25,000 teachers all over the world who participate in projects that really have um, a purpose. They, they really do make a difference in the world. So um, students and teachers can join iEARN and it, uh, in the resource section on the blog that Jim created, we have some information on how, a link to iEARN and you can learn how you can join iEARN. Um, and you have access to about, there are about 250 projects in the project book. Now, we're not saying that all of these projects are showcased in a blog. Um, we're going to show you a couple that use blogs to communicate with their members and then communicate with families um, and the progress of the, of, the, um, of the project. So in the resource section of that blog, in the Weebly blog, you will find a link to the project book and you can take a look through there, but we're just going to talk a little bit about a couple of the projects that we've participated in and others, other people have participated in that use blogging to communicate with the members of the project and then to a global audience. Um, another organization that is fantastic, I noticed that we have some um, secondary teachers, intermediate secondary teachers in this um, presentation tonight is an, an organization called Taking It Global. And Taking It Global um, is an organization that uses social networking for social good. So it sort of has that, that theme where students can connect and learn together and find an issue in which they're, they're interested and form a project. So the projects aren't necessarily in this, um, in Taking It Global, it's more the students are coming together and discussing issues. They're, um, and again, you can take a look in, on their site, Taking It Global, which is tigweb.org, and we put that in the resource section. But as a partner with Taking It Global is another organization called um, Global Encounters. And Global Encounters take some of those issues, like um, ed girls' education, malaria, eradication, um, hunger, poverty, and they connect students in specific projects that last for about six weeks. And they're facilitated through um, a, Taking It Global and another organization called Center for Global Education. Everything's sort of integrated. So um, there's a series through Global Encounters, there's a series of webinars. So um, the students meet each other during a webinar and then they decide on the topic that, that that's the part of the topic that they're going to discuss in, a, in an online blog situation. Um, and I'll show you an example of that after. If it seems a little confusing, it kind of is because all of these organizations work really closely together and they support each other with either the webinars or in the blogging issue or providing the project. But we'll, hope, we'll give you a couple of examples. So one example of how um, an IN project was used um, and blogging was used to facilitate, to facilitate the communication is a project called Art Miles. And Art Miles is um, a project where classes around the world can, uh, communicate together and collaborate on a mural. So, for example, this is, this is um, my class, and we were paired with a class in Japan. And our goal was to create a mural with a class in Japan 
and communicate with each, with each other and teach each other about the regions of Canada. So that's a grade four social studies topic. So what we did is we, um, there's a secondary space where the kids communicate and it's a private, um, it's a private classroom space where only, it's password protected so only members of, of the project can, can um, go in that, spot, in that space and that's for privacy issues but this is the way that we communicate with each other sort of in a, in a real, in, a, in quick time but also we can communicate our learning with parents and the, our partners class can see what's happening in our class fairly quickly. Um, so what I decided to do is I was a teacher that was in charge. My, with my partner teacher didn't want to set up the blog, so I set up a space on my classroom blog where we could share what was going on in each other's class. So the teacher in Japan would send me pictures and I would put pictures on my blog so the students in Japan could see it and also the student, the, my students could see what was happening. So the students in Japan, they, they painted what they learned about Canada on their half of the mural and then sent these images to me and I put that on my blog so that the children, that the kids in my class could see what was coming. So they saw this picture of the, of the half painted mural before it actually arrived in Canada. So when the mural arrived in Canada, in turn what we did is we put pictures on our blog to show the kids in Japan that the mural had arrived in Canada and so everybody was able to see and communicate. So the children in Japan had painted what they learned about um, Canada and about our region and we painted what we learned about Japan and, and some features of our region. So again the communication was um, facilitated through the blog that I hosted on our class blog. So you can see that when we finished the blog, when we finished the mural, sorry, finished the mural, we posted pictures on our blog. The kids in Japan were able to see they didn't have the actual mural because there's a time during this project that we want our local community to, be, to see the mural completed and celebrate that um, two classes around the world had, had worked on this mural. Um, so the picture was on the blog. And then the students in Japan, in turn, saw the pictures on our, on our class blog and they sent my students messages. The teacher sent me the pictures and I put them up on, and, and these messages, and I put them up on the blog to be shared. So um, that's one, that's one, um, one project within iEARN that uses blogging to communicate with, with others. Um, now, if you're interested in participating in a project like in the Art Miles project, if you want to send us a, an email at the end of it, they're looking for um, classrooms to participate in this project for next year. They would actually like some more, more Canadian classrooms so we can send you the information. It's a project that you need to actually apply for. It's fairly, very heavily funded by the Ministry of Education in Japan and um, it's it's a great project to participate in. You cover a lot of curriculum areas in an exciting way and have an opportunity to use blogging in your class to communicate with another class around the world. Jim, do you want to talk about um, the teddy bear project and what we did with this one this year? Okay. Let's maybe go ahead. So um, another sort of one of the original I earn projects is uh, teddy bear exchange, where teddy bears are exchanged between classrooms. And um, for example, I would send a teddy bear to a class in in let's say Pakistan and that teddy bear would travel around Pakistan and report back to um, my class either on a website or through email um, and then the class in Pakistan would send me a teddy bear and we would take the teddy bear around to 
um, areas of Canada and, and take pictures of the students. The students would be writing in, the, in, a, in a journal and they would report back. So they're sort of ambassadors from their country to learn about the other country. We had a really great opportunity this, this summer is there were quite a few teachers, about eight teachers in the teddy bear project and we had agreed to take our teddy bears with us to a conference that was in Argentina. And so instead of actually physically mailing the, the teddy bears to, the, to our partner country, um, the teachers physically exchanged the teddy bears. So here in this picture, we have a picture of Jen and me and um, a teacher from Brazil, uh, Rose, and one from Peru, Carlos, and one from Argentina, Anusha. And we exchanged our, t exchanged our teddy bears. There were actually about eight of us. There were some teachers from Australia, some from Japan. And so we decided that instead of the, the, the teddy bear travels being just reported on our classroom blogs, we would, um, which are here. So there's, we received a, my class received a teddy bear from Brazil and we would be posting our pictures, our teddy bear adventures on our class blog. And these are, um, there's Jim's class making a snowman and then there's my class making a snowman too. And these were actually in November, which was kind of sad that we had snow that early. But the, the students in, um, Jim had a bear from Australia and one from Brazil. So the students from Brazil would be able to visit the blog and see the adventures that their teddy bear was having. What we decided to do, and this is actually, sorry, this is an example of, of Jim's, one of Jim's students making a video and it was posted on the blog. So taking a, one of the, the bear from Australia and taking it to Animal Kingdom at Disney World and the, the little boy made, or somebody made the, the video and, and it was posted on their blog. What we decided to do is, and I'll go back to it, is as a group we decided to make a, a blog in Word, one of the teachers set it up in WordPress and left the passwords open so that we would be able to, all of the teachers and all of the classes, in all of the classrooms in the project would be able to post. So this was a situation where um, everybody had a password and a login and we were able to, um, just upload the pictures and um, the pictures and the adventures of the bears. So it was a really great way for the students in all of the countries to see how um, how the adventures of all of the bears, and a great way for the, for each class to be able to track what what was happening with the bears. And what we decided to do is this year it went really really well, but we realized that it was um, it was quite linear and, and the, the pictures and the text were just one after the other. So what the teachers are going to do is get together this year in Brazil, our conferences in Brazil this year, and see how we can improve the blog for next year and what kind of features and, and things that we want to do. But we realized it was a great tool for communicating um, the, the work in the project, but now we're going to go and we're going to reevaluate, which is really what we've done through the process of, of blogging. Every year we've gone and we've looked at our blog and said, what can we do to improve it and what can we, um, what can we do to, um, you know, communicate better with our partners or, or with our parents. Um, this is, I just wanted to go back, I might have put it in the wrong order, but um, another really great feature about blogging is, is the comment section and how parents and people around the world, that, you know, authentic global audience can be reading your class blog and posting comments. And, and it's really exciting for kids, and I don't, I'm sure even secondary students for, to see that people around the world are reading and posting and commenting on, on their work or, or um, on their thoughts. Um, we've always set our blogs up that we want to moderate our comments before they go live. Um, so it, you know, there, to be truthful, there aren't, aren't a whole lot of comments all the time. If we were, you know, if we had 90 students, as Jim said, it would be really difficult to be moderating that much. But um, it's a really great opportunity for the kids to see that people around the world are reading what's happening on the blog. And um, so we encourage people to be posting, but again, are moderating what's going on at the same time. Um, a project that we did with taking it global and with global encounters was an opportunity to look at climate change um, in our areas. So we 
through Taking It Global and through Global Encounters, we had a video conference with some environmentalists up in, um, in Whitehorse, sorry, no, in Churchill, Manitoba with the polar bears. And as an offshoot of that video conference, we looked at climate change in our area and um, what um, changes over time had happened. So um, in Taking It Global, they set up some blog space for the children to be, for the students to be reporting their, um, their findings and again, encouraging the, the students from all classes to be commenting and questioning the blog posts that were happening. So this is actually just a picture of, um, this is a collaborative project between um, my grade four students and another grade seven class in our school and they did this, did the project together and it was a really, really valuable project. We actually um, were, had the opportunity to present to the, um, to the town council our findings, the town council of Bradford, which was really exciting for the students and then reported that on our blog as well. Um, so, Probably if you have any questions, if there's specific things that you um, wanted to know ab about blogging or maybe um, we can give you some time to look in the resources section in on that um, Weebly blog because that's where things like Iron and, and Taking It Global, we have the links to those organizations you can take a look. Um, and yeah, we found blogging a really highly motivating, um, useful tool in our classrooms and something that we encourage you to try. And probably one thing that, one piece of advice that we'd maybe give you is just to start, just to start small. Don't think that you need to add all of those features in. It's something that um, will evolve over time as we did. It, our, you know, skills with blogging involved over time. We didn't start by embedding a lot of videos and a lot of um, slideshows and our Twitter feeds and our Facebook pages. We didn't start with that. We started really small, but we found as our students' skills developed and as our skills developed as well, we found it a really important tool in our classrooms. So Jim, I don't know if you want to I'm add something. I'm looking at here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I think I was delayed there, but me might be back in again. Um, yeah, I think, I, but for me, the more important thing was starting small, and I think it came up in the questions as you were talking there, is to A, make sure that you're aware of what your board policy is in terms of um, posting student images and student work, that sort of thing, and then it, 